Um, so, hello, my name is Zoe and I go to the Franco-German school here in Freiburg, Germany. Um, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Svetlana Krakowska. I'm head of applied uh, climatology laboratory at the Ukrainian Hydrometeorological Institute. At, at the same time, I'm, uh, I work for Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change uh, as a delegate of Ukraine and Vinny uh, Asa. Thank you very much. And um, could you tell us a little bit more about the, so your job at the IPCC and your role in it today? Yeah, well, actually, we need to start uh, from the beginning. Uh, in fact, this uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change was established more than 30 years ago on the request of uh, governments of different countries. Uh, and they wanted to know what uh, will be with our climate and the impact of climate on the different uh, spheres of our life and how we can prevent actually this impact and mitigate climate change. So uh, it was established in uh, this 1988. And since that time, uh, we, uh, we are now in so-called sixth cycle because the work of this panel is uh, actually uh, consisted of uh, different cycles and now it's six cycle with uh, <coughs> many reports, uh, many uh, so-called uh, regular reports and special reports. And what, uh, what we do in this uh, panel, in fact, um, uh, we have different actually <coughs> way of uh, working there and I, I do it uh, in different ways because from one point I'm as representative of government of Ukraine, I, I'm head of the delegation of, of Ukrainian experts on, the, on this um, uh, meeting session of IPCC, when, uh, where we uh, approve, approve summary for policy makers of these reports. And this is one part of my job, let's say, and uh, another part, uh, I was leading author of the six cycle working group one report, which is about uh, physical basis of uh, climate change. And in this report, uh, which was actually released uh, uh, last uh, August uh, 2021, uh, we, uh, I was actually author of a very interesting chapter, in fact, a chapter on uh, Atlas, and we provided interactive Atlas within this, uh, within this report. And it's very, it's actually innovative tool, and this is first time in this uh, IPCC reports where you can uh, find information for different regions. And this information based on climate models, a different scale of model, of a global or regional model, and different climate indices. And we believe uh, this tool will be very useful for many users across the globe. Wow, that sounds very amazing and interesting. Um, now we have a question from some students from our school. Hello. Um, the first question is, how did the Ukrainians perceive the global warming before the war? The second question is, were there any active associations? Actually, this is, uh, I, I guess it's, uh, well, I, I cannot compare to Germany, let's say, but I know uh, definitely about Ukrainian activists because they invited me many times and I provide for them many lectures uh, about climate, about the PCC uh, and about different uh, actually things connected with climate impact. Uh, and uh, I, I directly involved uh, in, uh, in some project and outreach events. We have... Uh, uh, so-called um, uh, organization as eco action uh, and and they they have many uh, many um, uh, activities connected with uh, directly climate change and of course we have uh, a representative and uh, some branch of uh, Fridays for future and the extinction rebellion and the uh, can uh, climate action network uh, for for east europe and uh, asia so i provide for them lectures as well and the uh, other actually we have ukrainian climate uh, network uh, uh, i know and we have uh, well uh, actually I, I i i guess i cannot you know list all of them but now with uh, with the war in ukraine in fact uh, many of them uh, of course, mostly mostly girls. They are abroad, and they do 
a lot of uh, action in Germany in particular uh, with uh, just to, to demand and request this embargo on uh, oil, gas and other fossil fuels because, uh, because they are really connected to uh, this uh, uh, climate um, forces, uh, to with, with the forces of the war in Ukraine. So we, uh, I provide for them, let's say, this uh, scientific background and uh, scientific support but they do these actions uh, in Germany in particular. Yes, yeah, so since the war broke out on the 24th of February 2022, young people here have been more and more, made more and more aware of Ukraine. And thanks to our teachers, we, um, the, um, our attention has been brought to your work and this connection you've made between um, the climate and the war. So could you just explain again quickly so that link, to what extent it's linked and how it's similar? Well, actually, uh, you know, the more you think about uh, climate change and uh, the war, this aggression of Russian Federation against Ukraine, uh, you will understand this connection very, very clear. Because uh, when we speak um, uh, about climate change, it's, uh, well, it's now, it's proved, you know, it's proved that uh, we, as uh, human civilization, we need uh, energy and we take this energy from burning these fossil fuels, and with this we have emission. And these emissions, which is uh, um, carbon dioxide, uh, it's one of uh, uh, greenhouse gases, goes to, to the atmosphere and cause actually this, uh, what calls uh, global warming, but in fact, it's not only warming, because it's just one part of the story. And with this, we have, uh, you know, these extreme events and all other consequences like uh, sea level rise, uh, ocean acidification, polar, uh, uh, polar uh, glaciers mel melting and everything. So the cause of this is burning of fossil fuels. When we think about the role uh, of Russian Federation, we should understand that Russia is uh, rich, uh, she, uh, it, it rich with, with this nature resources and particularly these fossil fuels, this oil, gas and coal. And uh, the economy based on this. And uh, so uh, they got their money for this country uh, selling these fossil fuels. And uh, the most actually disappointing for me and for many other people in Russia as well, that they put this money in the army, not, not to develop their nation, not develop their region because, well, I traveled a lot in Russia and I know uh, they, they, people in Russia, they live very poor and they're very bad, in fact. But they put this money directly to the army. And this army actually uh, funded by selling fossil fuels to other countries. And in this, and this one actually reason, another reason, I guess, from, from the West, uh, and now much more people uh, in West Europe, particularly, uh, just develop, uh, I mean, they develop their understanding that they are not independent states anymore, because they're dependent on this fossil fuel from Russia, and Russia just blackmails them. So, as, as we were actually in Ukraine, so we had the same story from Russia and the same actions of blackmailing, uh, so, uh, Many years ago, in fact, yeah, we have uh, we had actually this very very close connection, of course, uh, when we were Soviet Union and uh, everything was connected. Uh, well, but then we were just uh, recognized that it, we we cannot live in such dependency, and we we wanted to be independent, and that's the cause actually that Russia didn't want to to leave us alone. So again, this fossil fuel it's the root for for the war and, and for climate change. That's why if we cut this route, we will uh, help climate system and we will help uh, the war uh, to, to stop the war in Ukraine. Wow, that's crazy how closely linked they are. So today the UN Secretary General is meeting with the President of Ukraine. Do you have any hopes of what might be the outcome of this meeting? Well, uh, you know, <laughs> After these two months uh, of, of the war, we, uh, we understand that uh, it is not so easy uh, to stop this war, of course. But what we really want uh, to prevent, we want to prevent more victims of this war. 
we already have uh, so big price. We already have so many, you know, these atrocities and uh, everything in my country is destroyed. It's, uh, it's, it's big pain for everybody here, for, for us who, who we, you know, we were, we were built this country and we, we really were proud of, of our country and now it's just, uh, you know, demolished. And uh, what, uh, what we really want, and with this uh, meeting with UN Secretary, maybe, maybe it will be possible to, you know, at least to, to evacuate people from these uh, places where uh, fighting the big fighting now in this Mariupol city and in, in the east and south of Ukraine, where my relatives, in fact, they are in, in this one of this uh, South City uh, already, and uh, I, I know from them directly how it is. Uh, yeah, uh, we were in Kiev uh, under this bombing, and it was really awful. Uh, when you don't know, will you uh, be alive next morning, or even next minute, in fact. So uh, what, what we really uh, want and what we really you know, hope with all these uh, international efforts uh, at least, at least leave this war to military forces and uh, just to give opportunity other people, civilians, uh, to, to escape from these uh, places of uh, direct fighting. Yes, thank you very much. So um, if you had one message to tell young people um, across Europe today, what would that message be as a final statement? Okay, well, uh, I, I, I am a climate scientist for many years, and I know that our climate system actually is, uh, is out of control, almost out of control. It's, it's not balanced now, and with every day and with every, actually, this emission, we put more and more, you know, force, uh, which will uh, come back uh, to, our, to our heads, let's say. And at the same time, I, I see the war in my country. And I, in fact, I cannot, you know, concentrate on uh, climate science uh, too much at this, at this situation. So my message will be, when we are here on the front line uh, of fighting, uh, you know, independence, freedom for, not only for Ukraine, but for whole democratic world, please continue your effort to prevent uh, all other uh, climate crisis consequences. We cannot do it here in, in Ukraine, but you can do it in, 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 in other countries. So don't stop, please. Put more effort, transfer to this green, uh, green technology and cut your dependency on fossil fuel. Thank you very much for that. And thank you for giving us your time in these difficult times. Thank you. Yeah.